G'day, welcome to the workshop. I'm Steve Hay and this is Woodworking Masterclass. As you can tell, I haven't got an apron on. I feel kind of strange in front of the camera with an apron, but the reason being is I've just been asked to make a bookcase from someone very high up in the house and they know I'm the only one that'll do it for nothing. Oh, Bob settled in. Look at that, he's got brand new carpet in the office as well. Dear, oh dear, tough life, eh, Bob? So what I thought I'd do is share with you the experience of drawing the bookcase working out what components I need, then actually going up to Masters at Parkinson, which is my local hardware shop, pick the timber, and we'll go through the timber racks and I'll show you what I look for when I'm buying timber. And what I want to do with this one is minimum machining. So I really just want to get the timber out of the racks at the hardware shop, bring it back here. I might have to do a little bit of trimming up or truing up, but then make it so I'm not doing a lot of machining and a lot of sizing. So with the sizes, I want this bookcase to be 400, or 400, four foot high or 1.2 meters or thereabouts and about 900 wide or three foot wide. Now, when you go and buy timber and we'll check it and you buy a 1.2 meter length, I guarantee it's not 1.2 meters. It can be whatever length. So we might have to true that up, but I'm not going to get hung up on sizes. What I want to do is just get this bookcase, put it together, keep someone very happy. Then I can come back down here and do some more work. But really, I do enjoy doing it. And it's a project that those that don't have a lot of machines can easily do. So first of all, I've got to draw it up. And I've got to think how many shelves I'll need. And as you can tell, I'm not a terrific drawer, but I don't have to be because all this really is to do for me is to represent the components I need and what I'll need to buy. Now I can break that down into the parts that I need. The spacing of the shelves themselves that's something that I'll actually work out once I get the boards back here and I'll measure the books that I need and I'll work it out. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I want at least four shelves. So that's one, two, three, four spaces. In this particular build, I'm going to actually have five shelves and a top. And that'll become apparent as we get further into the construction phase. It makes it a lot simpler to make a bookcase like this. All right, I've got eight things on my list. I've got eight sets of components for the bookcase. If you've got a nail gun, by all means, you can put this together with a nail gun. But I prefer to use a hammer and nail myself because a lot of people don't have nail guns. Okay, that's it. That's the, the bookcase we're going to make. That's the list of components I need. So I'll meet you up at the hardware shop and then we'll come back and we'll start building the bookcase. Come on, Bob. What you're looking for is nice boards. Personal choice, I don't really want knots in it. That's a nice piece. Just to make sure they're nice and straight as well. We want one large one for the top. I want that to be quite nice looking. Good thing about picking your own timber is you're left alone and you can sort through it. Just check my list. Got the 235s, the sides and the top. And I need some 19 by 90. 
which is right in front of me here. That bit's nice, nice and straight. Got that, 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 that. Then got to go over the next aisle and get the mouldings, get the VJ. With the VJ, I want seven pieces at 1.2. I can only buy it in 2.4, so I'll buy four pieces. That'll give me one spare in case I need it later on. That's quite a nice profile for the skirt. So I think I'll have that one. Now I've just got to find a nice bit of crown moulding. Quite a nice crown moulding too, I think I'll have that one. Could go for a Scotia, which is actually where that's rounded. It's actually concave, but I think that'll look nice with the bookcase that I'm making. All right, go and get some nails and we're ready to go. That'll do, 40 by 1.6. There you go, just over a hundred bucks and you're gonna have a good bookcase. Let's go back to the workshop and we'll put it together. Okay, that's it, I've unpacked the car. Here's all the stuff I just bought up at Masters and we're ready to turn it into a bookcase. But before I do anything, I think I should go and get changed, put my apron on, grab Bob, and then we'll come back and start building the bookcase. Okay, I've got changed, cleared the bench, got some timber out. Yeah, that's all right, Bob, you just get comfortable, mate. Don't worry about it, I'll do all the work. Now let's start making this bookcase. We're going to make a four foot by three foot, roughly. What I wanted to do was actually get the timber directly from the hardware shop and use it without having to cut to specific lengths. We'll just use it as it is. But there are a few things you've got to be conscious of when you do buy timber from a hardware shop. Number one, it's not necessarily square at the ends. Now these two boards, they're fairly close to being the same length. But if I get a square and put it on them, that's surprisingly good. And this is at about two mil. It's going sloping down. So what I've got to do with these, you could plane them flat with a block plane if you like, but for the ease and for the speed of the video, what I'll do is just go over to the docking saw and I'll dock these square to my fence and then we can start discussing about how to set it out and how to start making them. And along the way, there's going to be some jigs you're going to have to make, which I'll take you step by step through as well. So I'll just pop over to the saw, dock these so they're square. I'm not worried about the length. I bought them at 1200. So that look, they could be 1210. Where's the measuring thing? They could be 1210, they could be 1220. I really don't know. Okay, 1225. I'm not worried about that. All I want to do is get them square. Okay. Check them on this side. All right. So they're nice and square and they are cut to the same length and that length, I don't know what it is. As I said, I bought these as 1.2s. Before I cut it, it could be 1.235. Now it could be 1.22. But it doesn't matter because what I want to do is go through the process of making the bookcase. Later on, what I will do on another video is I'll make another bookcase, not out of pine, but out of cedar or something. And I'll use traditional techniques. And there, yeah. We'll measure, we'll shoot with planes, we'll get it flat, we'll work really precise. But I guess what I want to do with this video is to show you the joy you can have in making a bookcase. You don't need all the expensive stuff under the sun. You don't need to be a fine craftsman, but you can make a bookcase that's gonna be useful, people are gonna love, friends are gonna want you to make one for them too, and it's easy with what your local hardware shop's got. So, enough said. Now, at this stage, if you want, you can sand the timber to take the machining marks out. That's up to you. It depends how you want to finish it. 
Personally, I would give it a quick sand because even this bit here, it doesn't show up on camera, but I can see the knife marks where it's gone through the thicknesser. So again, if I was doing traditional woodwork, I'd use a cork block. In this case, let's use a random orbital sander. I've got 100 grit on it. And away we go. Okay, now, have a look at the clock. That took me all of about five minutes to sand that. Now, it's not a finished sand by any means. What it is, is just to get the knife marks off of the machine, because if you stain this, they're gonna come through and you're gonna have these horizontal lines going all the way through your job. Whereas with a quick sand 100, it cleans it up. It also breaks, it, it sort of has um, a glossy, feel to it, almost waxy, so it cleans that up. It's pine, which is, is great timber, and you can build a lot of great things with pine, but it's not a furniture grade type of timber what, that I would class. So it's got marks on it, it gets bruised, it gets knocked. I'm not worried about it. And this one, I'm hoping to finish with a liming white finish, so it's gonna have that shabby chic French provincial sort of look about it. Okay, what we've got to do now, we've broken the surface on that, it feels nice, is work out the dimensions that you want to have the books, uh, the shelves at. Got a couple of books here. This one would be the largest that I have. By the way, if you want to do marketry, get a copy of that. I was fortunate enough a couple of years ago to spend a couple of days with Silas Koff, and whoa, he is just incredible. Um, if he ever comes out for another workshop. Silas, if you hear that, you come out for another workshop, I'll be there. Uh, this is a, a paperback size one, and these are, um, I don't know, medium size, I suppose. So we'll get some measurements going with these. It's a measuring stick. And by measuring stick, I do mean stick. Benno, mate, still using it, cheers. Hope you're enjoying those long summer nights. All right, this is 315. That's coffee table um, size, really. That one's 260. That's 230. And this is 210. So what I'm looking for, in, and it's a question of how many books you've got of what size. I want to have one large shelf down the bottom, which will take the coffee sized books and then I'll have a shelf above that that'll take the in-between size mainly hardcover I've got a lot of books this size so I'll have two shelves of those okay now it's a question of working it out you don't want it the same height as the book you want enough so you can get your finger in and and pull it out so it's not jam tight or else what it'll do is crease the top part of the covers here, which is not a good look. I think I'll go, oh, before we do that, I'm jumping the gun. I'm having a skirting on this as well. So you've got to allow that first. The skirting profile I've got is this profile here. And the depth of that is 65 mil. So I've got to allow for that on the bottom over the bookcase. So I'll put a mark just where that goes. Put this out of the way before I break something. And personally, I like to have a little bit of a quirk or a little bit of a lip where the shelf comes. So that skirting isn't exactly with the shelf. There's a couple of reasons for that, which I'll explain when I'm putting the skirting on, but I really am jumping the gun here. Look at your board as well. That grain pattern, to me, suggests that should be down. So this would be the top. To me, it just makes more sense. But again, it's a personal preference. So whatever floats your boat. So this will be the bottom of 
I'll even write the bottom on there. There you go. And work out which you want is the inside or the outside. No, this is the inside. So what I'll do is come up the thickness of that moulding, which was 65 plus a quarter of an inch. So I'll bring it up to about 70 mil. That'll do me. And then I'll draw a line across there. That then becomes the bottom of the bottom rebate or dado for the bottom shelf. It's 19 mil, just there. Square. Pencil on the mark, maybe square up to it. This line here is the top of the bottom shelf. So now we go 320 up. Mark, pencil on the mark, slide your square up to it, draw the line, 19 mil, pencil on it, slide it up. It's the next size, it's 235, so what I'll make the next shelf is 250. Now we've got the bottom shelf, the middle shelf, now we're starting to do the top shelf. What I'm going to do there, I'm going to have two shelves of paperbacks. And the paperback, that's 210. So what I'll do is make this one 230. As I said, these sizes I'm using aren't arbitrary at all. You put whatever size you think you need for your books into it. You might want to put a wine rack in the bottom. And that's another thing I'm going to be doing down the track is showing you how to make wine racks. Or you might want to put a cupboard on the bottom. There's so many options, but this is just the layout. And also, I suppose, to, to show you the freedom of what you can do. You don't need to stick to absolute plans. And you'll notice... When I build things now, more so than before, you don't see the finished article because you're actually on the journey with me from conception right through to delivery. And if I make a mistake, as I did, I don't know, a couple of videos ago with the box, you're right there when I make the mistake and you can see how to overcome it rather than here's one I built earlier and let's do exactly the same thing. This is, this is much, much more fun and I think the word is organic. Okay, so let's go 19. All right, now you might be looking at this and going, well, that's all very fine, but you've got a big space here. That's true, but if you remember, I bought some of this stuff. This is moulded, so if you continue these lines, it's actually 90 degrees, so I've got to work out how much I'm going to need for that. So I'll work in reverse. I'll pretend this is the actual top and this is going to be the stretcher going from side to side. How much do I want? I reckon that looks pretty good. Okay, that's 60 mil. So if I come down 60 mil and that's just the right size for that book. Now, as we did with this bit, the other side, work out what you want on the inside. It's got a mark on there, so I'll have that so it's hidden on the inside. And I don't know if you can see on the overhead shot, but these are a little bit um, bowed or a bit of a dip in it on the long side, but I'm not worried about that because I just want to, as I keep saying, I just want to make a great bookcase without going too technical on you. And believe me, in my time, I've made thousands. I used to run a big workshop and we made thousands. Get a longer square if you've got one. And now, just transfer these lines here over to here. Well, I think that's a great time to wind up part one of making a bookcase. I'll continue to take those lines across and in part two, 
we'll start to cut the dados. I'll show you four or five different ways, some with power tools, some without power tools, and some ways with a mix of both. But until then, this is Steve pulling the shed door down on another part of another project and saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. And as a matter of fact, talking about safety, some of you have noticed I've got a bit of a scar here. I just had a skin cancer removed. Now, it showed up because I have regular skin checks. So I'd urge anyone out there, if they're available to you, get skin checks. They are really worth your time. But it's all good, all gone away, so I've got plenty of years of woodworking left in me. So remember, enjoy your woodwork, and I look forward to having you in the shed for part two. But until then, if you like what we do, please like us on Facebook, or join up the e-workshop at Woodworking Masterclass, and I've got some announcements coming along with what we're doing with that soon. So, till part two, take it easy, see you soon. Bye. G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. You know when I need hardware or any bits and pieces, this is where I come, Masters Parkinson, near Browns Plains in Queensland. But with almost 60 stores nearly Australia wide, there's bound to be one near you. So why don't you do as I do, go to Masters for your hardware. And if you see me in the Parkinson store, say g'day.